Speaking of gentlemen who have cracked the starting lineup, Ryan Troutman making his third consecutive start in goal tonight for Louisville. The Kentucky transfer will get the nod over Gavin Kronecki. And John Michael Hayden has been asked about that many a time so far this season. And he said, listen, it's a good problem to have. We have two starting keepers and maybe more with some other guys whose names you haven't heard just yet as kickoff has got us underway in the Derby City. Both of these teams, Matt, really like to go for it. They like to be in possession, both technically gifted. I'm excited. I'm hoping this will be as open as it could be. UNCG led by fourth year head coach Chris Rich. And he told us we know what we're up against in a Louisville team that he believes is perhaps the best attacking team in the country. And he knows a lot about Louisville because Chris Rich has previously coached at Duke, UNC, and Virginia Tech. And he told us, Jeff, this is one of the better Louisville teams that he's ever seen in the nearly decade he spent in the ACC. That's high praise, and, and it certainly has to be up there. I mean, it, there's been some really good Louisville teams, but you just look at the talent level that this group has, the number of goal scorers they've got, uh, and really a, a lot of additions that have solidified them defensively, too. It's a very talented group. Here is Makumba Ba in his third year on campus. One of those very talented attacking players. And now Saunder Road maintaining possession well. Louisville's last five matches. A draw with Boston College, two losses by a goal each to Kentucky and Duke, and of course, back-to-back -back wins most recently over Florida Gulf Coast, a program receiving votes, and a top 10 team in Pitt, and certainly Pitt, a team that could very easily wind up right back at the College Cup again this season. There's a ball played forward for Maddox Mallory, one of a couple of freshmen in the starting lineup tonight for UNCG. I love that kid, Quentin Elliott, he is. A uh, kid who came through the Columbus Crew 2 system, understands how to play wing back, and because of that ability, he really is confident on the ball. We just saw it a couple of times. He took space where it was there and blew past the defender on another occasion. Really good young player right here, number 23. And really fits the system well, doesn't he? Couldn't fit it better. John Michael Hayden loves to bring up the outside backs <laughs> into the attack. Funny thing is, so does UNCG. They <laughs> love their fullbacks getting high. They are prone to cutting inside, but they can also give a little width for UNCG. So both teams love to utilize these fullbacks, and that's going to create a lot of space in behind for both teams if they're getting forward. John Michael Hayden told us he feels like this UNCG team plays a lot like Pitt. Their personnel is very similar. The way they like to possess and build also alike with the Pitt Panthers, a team that they took down two to one the other night in their second top 10 win of the season. There is a ball forward for Saunders Road. Nico Diaz in the area as well. 
Greensboro coming off a disappointing 1-0 defeat to Campbell, a team that made the NCAA tournament last year and frankly is always a safe bet to make the NCAA tournament. But they are looking for a bounce back win in their first meeting with a top 25 team this season. Yeah, talk about a bounce back opportunity. This is a big matchup for UNCG on the road. And you can see early on the technical ability they have, but Louisville's gonna wanna push the issue early and Greensboro's gonna have to defend first. There is Diaz turning it wide. Bubakar Kamara in the area. Back-to-back -back matches with a goal. For the leading returning goal scorer amongst Power Five conferences. That's a really good pass. Perhaps an even better tackle on the back end from Josh Jones. Who has solidified himself as the backbone of this back line. Yeah, good awareness from Josh Jones. Those two center backs have been really important for Louisville improving as a group defensively. Here is the freshman Steven Hernandez and he turns it over. Jones, the sophomore from Hatfield, Pennsylvania, played all 18 matches last year. But in the offseason was named the 2022 NPSL Young Player of the Season. And that was during the months throughout the summer where John Michael Hayden feels like he just elevated his game another level. Well, I know when you've got a guy like Bryce LaBelle who just made a really smart play chesting the ball down back there and then you can pair him with a guy in Jones who is still learning the game at a high level but is rapidly growing a really good basketball player. I mean, that's a great duo mm. uh, with high IQs and Jones gives you that height and size and LaBelle gives you the heart. It's a really nice combination back there for Louisville. Feels like LaBelle has been playing for Louisville for yeah. 14 years. <laughs> Brad Sample too. And yet he's only a junior. Yeah. Such is life post COVID-19 and all the changes to uh, eligibility, status of your year, et cetera. Nico Diaz applying some pressure. First look at Nicholas Wild. The junior keeper from Berlin, Germany. And the 2021 SOCON Keeper of the Year. Plenty of talent on this UNCG team out of the SOCON. And a turnover gives it up to Saunder Road. Now he is wide to Nico Diaz. And a bit ambitious from Eric Dankwa. Well, Greensboro now twice has had lackluster clearance efforts. And I know the first defender was just trying to get a foot on it, but they've got to be cleaner with how they're getting the ball out of the area because the header earlier led to a shot opportunity for Diaz, and that clearance just set up Donqua to have a go. You've got to be sharper if you're UNCG. One of the things that Chris Rich told us is that he feels like his team has yet to play a complete 90 minutes in terms of their focus and their ability to limit mistakes. Played a little bit wonky in the first 20 minutes against Campbell. That is when the Camels scored the lone goal in that match and felt like for the rest of the match, they dominated. There is Chris Rich and company in his fourth season as the head coach. Took this team to the NCAA tournament in the spring of 2021 for the first time in over a decade. Sonder Road.
Rules doing a really good job. Greensboro is a team that wants to possess. You can see how it's almost to the last breath that they're willing to hang onto the ball and try to try to play a pass to each other and, and keep it at feet. And that's a dedication to their style and Louisville has forced them early on to have to just clear it a couple of times. Chris Rich told us, listen, we are not going to come into Louisville and just pack the box and defend for 90 minutes. At least that's not the plan. But of course, a team with Louisville's attacking prowess, sometimes it doesn't always go according to plan. Maddox Mallory playing it across and well blocked by Bryce LaBelle. Vignali. Nothing from the referee. Vignali on a run and played away by Josh Jones. Out for a corner. Well, how about in just that one flourish, you saw a fullback, a little nice nifty inside out touch to get to the, along the touch line to get a cross away. You saw another nifty move to keep the ball and then a, a cheeky little chip through the middle. Greensboro is, they are not afraid to, to try some things and play the way they're used to playing. They're not gonna change as we just heard Chris Rich say, they are not going to change what they do. It is the sophomore Jack Birch out to take the corner. And to the top of the box. Not much there from it, Ngondo. He is certainly somebody to keep an eye on throughout the course of this match. Number 10 in blue, JC Ngondo, the sophomore from France. Chris Rich believes he is MLS ready right now. John Michael Hayden believes he should be playing in the ACC. <laughs> that means he's a good player either way, uh, but uh, they're looking for him as is obvious from that corner but they just have to be able to get him in a position where he can make that decision quicker. Already a pair of goals this season for Ngando and five assists to boot. That leads the team. Good stop from Bradley Sample. Now ahead from Akumba Ba. Ba still, and Ba puts it in. Opening the account for the Cards 15 minutes into the match. It's 1-0 Louisville. Well, you just saw what we were talking about earlier, Greensboro's dedication to passing, to feet, to trying to keep possession. If you're gonna play that way, you've gotta be crisp with it. And the pass there intercepted rather easily by Sample in a perfect vertical advance pass. Makuma Ba, looking like a 10-year veteran holding off the defender and biding his time to get it onto that left foot and drive it into the far post. Excellently taken from him and an unforced error there from UNCG that allowed Louisville to take the lead. His third goal of the season, he had five all of last year. And John Michael Hayden said he finished last year playing the way he did when the staff recruited him, and there's been no letdown ever since. Well, and the thing I love about Makuma Ba as UNCG enters the area here, but good defending, he's come back a couple of times to help get a poke in or, or help defend, win the ball back. But in front of frame, Matt, he's slowed so much down. He's, he's taking his time, you just saw it, so much more confident in the area. The sophomore from Dakar, Senegal, now in his third season with Louisville. And one of those guys in the attack that you just can't ever take your eye off of because you never know what he might do. Yeah. 
So now how do UNCG respond? They have been on their heels for nearly the opening 15 minutes. Well, they've had some work down this right side that seems to be where they're spending a lot of their efforts. And they need to try to figure out ways to be quicker on the counter. I know that that might not always be exactly what they want to do playing direct, but Louisville does vacate some space. They just have to be able to respond quickly here and not allow that coach's cliche the first five minutes after conceding, let the team score again on you. Sonder Road takes it right back at midfield. Now he's got Makumba Ba on a run, and it's just out of his reach. What a season he is having. Four assists already. He had five all of last year. We're not even nine games into the season yet. And wearing a captain's band this year in his second season on campus. Our referee tonight, Kellen Radisov. Assistant referees, Caleb Riley and Aaron Rollins. Here is Abubakar Kamara. Jones a little too hot out wide. He was looking for Philip Fredall. This is one of the areas in which John Michael Hayden and his staff have continued to try and dissect those moments after goals scored and after goals conceded not allowing the lulls to overwhelm this Louisville team and allow an equalizer. It's a key part for a lot of coaches and also a big difference in getting more and more wins, stacking them up if you're a team like Louisville playing in some really high intensity games. This is a pivotal time for both teams. Basile plays it in for Ngando and Fredall clears it off the back line. That was an excellent ball in from Basile, tantalizing, hanging up there. And Gondo, it's a high degree of difficulty, but I think he'd want that back to maybe try to glance it off to his left foot and take it away from Fred Hall. Basile Mark, one of three Frenchmen on the roster for Chris Rich, has developed a nice connection there in France. And Gondo. One of the Frenchmen as well, and here he is gliding down the far sideline. And the first shot of the night for UNCG, high and away, but better build up play and leading to a better opportunity in that sequence. Yeah, Hernandez just couldn't quite keep it down, but that's a pocket of space that's real dangerous for teams defending where there's, you know, five, five yards or so from your back line getting pushed into defending right in front of the frame and where their attackers are able to drift in a, in a little bit of an opening. Better stuff here from Greensboro. We'll see if they can keep churning that out and maybe get a couple more opportunities and take one of them. Ryan Troutman, first time we've really had to call his name tonight. Making his third consecutive start. Two matches played, two wins under his belt, including a clean sheet against Florida Gulf Coast. After the loss to Campbell, UNCG has fallen out of the top 25 coaches poll, still receiving votes. You would have to think 
regardless of the results here tonight. By the end of the season, if they are to repeat as champions, they will end up a top 25 team, which means five of Louisville's first nine opponents this year are ranked in the top 25. Well, you know, that's exactly what John Michael Hayden wanted to test his team with because the ACC is just chock full of nationally ranked teams, high RPI teams. I'm really intrigued to see what the RPI looks like when it comes out. And that's why you play these games. You want to test yourself consistently. We're playing at home. You would be considered the favorite here if you're Louisville. So this would be a quality win if the result holds, but it also really well prepares you for your league. And then ultimately, the unknowns in the NCAA tournament preparing for some of these mid-major clubs who are stacked with quote unquote power five talent and can come in here and beat the giant, which is Louisville in this situation. Yeah, Louisville doesn't need any reminders of the <laughs> capability of those types of teams after the experience in the NCAA tournament last year. Of course, falling to Bowling Green in the first round of last year's tournament. But John Michael Hayden has made no bones about it. And really, since he took the starting job, or the head job, rather, four seasons ago, the goal at Louisville is always make a college cup. But this year, he feels like that is a legitimate reality and not just a dream. I mean, they have the, the talent to do it. They have the belief and the understanding to do it. A lot of uh, coaches these days are talk, talk a lot about the game model, how they want a game to play out. They've got that organic confidence built in to understanding what they want and believing that they can execute it. That That is a big, big part of all of this when you have the talent that Louisville has. Here's a run from Steven Hernandez, the freshman for UNCG. And again, Philip Fredhall, the freshman on the back line who has come in and solidified his spot in the starting 11, making the play. And Gondo, defended by Diaz. And now Fredhall tracking him into the corner. This is a UNCG team that led the country last year in corners taken. In addition to goal differential, scoring offense, and overall points. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good team, very technically gifted. And they return a lot of players too, yeah. Jeff. Seven starters return from the team last year that won the SOCON regular season championship. That kind of stuff matters too. It's, it's the understanding of what it took to get to that point. And then you come back and you get a chance to try to replicate and then build on that effort. And that's vital. That's what Louisville was trying to do last year in winning their division, sharing the division's uh, title, quote unquote. I don't know if they give out a trophy for that, <laughs> but at least being in the uh, Atlantic Division, co-champions co there, going to the NCAA tournament, they got that experience. Think about how much that must drive them this year to repeat that experience, but also, as we were talking about earlier, avoid what happened in the NCAA tournament. And if you're UNCG, you're saying, we had a great year last year, let's build on it, let's, Add a couple wins in, in the NCAA tournament mm. and, and see what we can do. The problem that UNCG ran into last year, although they won the regular season, they fell in an upset loss in the conference tournament. So they were left out of the NCAA tournament in the fall of 2021. Boy, a win here tonight against the top 25 Louisville side would give them a real argument for an at-large bid if it came down to it at the end of the year. Yeah, I'm guessing, I mentioned the RPI earlier, I can't wait for those rankings to come out because I'm guessing Louisville's gonna be pretty high up there. 
Great play from Akumba Bob. Well, earlier in the night gave Louisville the one goal lead. Stopping JC and Gondo on that drive to the 18 yard box. Gondo went near post, headed away by Sample. And it's out for a Louisville throw. Now on comes Constantinos Jorgalides. Nico Diaz comes off. Jorgalides in his freshman season already making a massive impact for this team. Three goals, two assists to his name. They call him Pedro Fonseca 2.0. <laughs> and if you follow Louisville soccer over the years, you know how instrumental he was up top and in the midfield for this Louisville attack. And it goes back to the depth thing that we were talking about earlier, that you can roll these guys in. After 25 minutes of having to defend Nico Diaz, you trot in this kid, you got so many options on the bench too that just make this team so dangerous. Big collision behind the play. It was Jorgalides. Can't quite tell who it was in a blue jersey down. And Jorgalides walked away and the UNCG player slow to get up. That's a hard hit. Mm. To your point, though, about being able to cycle players, you look at the last match against Pitt, six subs off the bench, five of them played at least 25 minutes. And it, it just is a really difficult thing to defend. Here is Hernandez making a run, and there is Philip Fredall on the back line, turning him away. What an excellent recovery from the freshman. It's, uh, it's a big plus when your fullbacks can get back and defend like that. They've increasingly become attacking-minded players, but they do still have those responsibilities. That was a really nice carry into the area by Hernandez. Freshman has his own abilities, but Fred Hall reading the play really well and, and hustling to make it. He has been one of the pleasant surprises of this 2022 campaign thus far. Louisville on top 1-0. After the opening goal by Makumba Ba, not 15 minutes in. Both teams now seemingly settling in, particularly UNCG. They've had much more possession here over the last 10 or 15 minutes. And a nice flick from Dankwa to Makumba to Abu Bakr Kamara, rather. And now two more subs will come on. Brandon McManus, the Kentucky transfer, and one of your favorites, Ooh. the freshman Damian Barker John. <laughs> Love this kid, just a firecracker down the sidelines so quick. He's got those electric green boots tonight, Matt, so we know exactly what <laughs> he He came where to he play is. tonight, yeah. right? He is uh, just a scintillating young talent. I'm excited to see what he can do. Not quite the Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton cleats that we saw from Marvin Harrison <laughs> Jr. for Ohio State football over the weekend, but nonetheless making an imprint with his fashion. <laughs> it's 
it's going to be a big test for Greensboro going forward is they've been able to get into areas that are appealing. They be a little bit more dangerous there, but then they get into that final third and they still haven't quite been decisive enough or had enough options. And that's where you might get a little reticent throwing bodies forward, but in order to make plays when you're getting forward like that, you've got to have more than one option and you can't dribble yourself into a cul-de-sac. Louisville, of course, and John Michael Hayden will be the first to tell you this, far from perfect. There is no perfect football team eight matches into the season, but so far tonight, Jeff, they've recovered well, they've defended well, they've closed down the spaces. A little too heavy on the cross from Isaiah Vignali. He was looking for the freshman Hernandez. There's been some really good combination work down this uh, Greensboro right side and Louisville's left side going right at Quinton Elliott who has been a really good defensive fullback for Louisville but they're able to overload him a little bit these past couple of advances down that side once again just not able to get that right finishing touch that they needed in the attacking third good crowd on hand tonight for this Tuesday night tilt at Dr. Mark and Cindy Lynn Stadium. It is also Pups in the Park night. I know you're a big Whew. fan of that. Huge. Notice you didn't bring your pooch into the booth, though. Yeah, she uh, she probably wouldn't be able to stand the, the fact that we need it to be <laughs> relatively quiet in here. I don't think she Or that you're not that. giving her the attention yes, that, that she is, wants. that is so true. She might be watching at home, though. There you go. <laughs> there is Ngando playing it in. And Josh Jones knocking it down. And UNCG will again have to reset. Final 15 minutes of the first half. Brandon McManus held at midfield. Might this warrant a booking? I appreciate that the two of them after about a nanosecond of things feeling like it was going to flare up, they just kind of were like, all right, let's, let's, <laughs> let's be adults here. Well Emmanuel handled. Hagen with the infraction. Haven't really called his name much tonight, but he is a stud for this UNCG team, a first-team all-conference player a season ago, and a product of Montverde Academy down in Florida, somebody or a program that Louisville has drawn from many times over the last few years. Yeah, that's a that's a really good place to learn how to play. And uh, yet another super talented kid on this UNCG roster. And an imposing figure on the yes. back line as well. It's six foot four. Here he is. Guiding it back into the midfield, but a turnover as Jorgalide has got a foot on it. And now Hernandez with some room to work on the far sideline. The game has opened up quite a bit, don't you think, here over the last 15 minutes? What's changed in your mind? Well, UNCG is getting forward quite a bit more. And they're forcing Louisville to spread itself out a little bit more, but Louisville is also doing a good job of forcing UNCG, especially its back four, to, to force them back a little bit, not allowing these fullbacks to get forward as much as they would like to in the system. And as a result, UNCG is getting to a certain spot in the field and having to stop and hope that reinforcements arrive. It's a great chance to counter right here. Vignali. Out to Hernandez, Jorgalides comes in and lays the body down, winning it back for Louisville. For as technical as both of these teams are, we've seen some physicality here in the opening 30 minutes. Well, they're both built to win the ball back quickly. If they don't have it, and especially Louisville, Louisville's a, a very significant counter-pressing team all over the field. 
frenetic when they're out of possession. And when you put two of those teams together, they're going to run into each other <laughs> quite a bit. And it's going to be a, a physical game. That is Marco Milanese down, tying his boot. And the referee, Kalen Radisav, chatting things over with Sammy Lashkar. Ishmael playing it forward for Hernandez. There is the equalizer. The freshman puts it in for UNCG, and we are level at one. And just like that, Greensboro st strikes back. And that's what this team is capable of doing. They've got so many quality players in this group. That's the quick strike ability that they have that we just hadn't seen very much so far, but that is a great job by El Harchi to come across, use his physicality. He's a bigger dude, 6'2", push his way onto the ball, and what an excellent pass through. That is an understanding of space, where to place the ball. Great run from Hernandez, really good understanding of each other, and two quality goals created from counter pressing and quickly winning the ball back high up the pitch. Steven Hernandez now four goals this year. He had a hat trick against Coastal Carolina as David Bacuzo comes on. So does Patrick Idukevich for Louisville. Fresh off his season debut against Florida Gulf Coast. Back to that pass from Ishmael El Harchi. Interesting guy. Great story. He's a grad student coming over from Spain, part of the Moroccan U-20 team. And we asked Chris Rich, what stands out to you about him? He said, he's a man. <laughs> McManus on the edge of the 18. He was looking for Barker John, and instead it goes out for a Louisville throw. Well, you just saw him impose his physicality there. He just muscled. Didn't see who it was, but muscled a Louisville player off the ball and then made a really wise decision to turn and play that ball through. It was a really nice play. So now can Louisville respond with one before the halftime whistle? Just a shade under 11 minutes left in the opening 45. Parker John has it muscled away by Ethan Conley. And now Ngondo playing it forward. Colton Sessoms taken down by Josh Jones. Sessoms still. And the whistle gives it back to Louisville. And Jones a bit shaken up after the play. It was a really physical interaction there. I thought Jones just did a, about the right level of physicality for a center back. And it's hard when you're, what, six inches taller than the striker. It's going <laughs> to look like you're going into his head, but it was really a 50-50 nudge between them. And I think he just landed awkwardly on the ball there or got tripped up a little bit, but he looks to be OK. Good back, back heel flick there. Jorgalides was looking for Bacuzo, who as of late has really made an impact off the bench. He's played 35 minutes or more in the last thir three matches. Another one of those pleasant surprises along with Philip Fredhall this season. 
freshman providing depth for John Michael Hayden. Well, and it also gives you the ability to turn into a double pivot in your midfield and let Donqua get a little bit further forward, help Brad Sample out a little bit because the way that UNCG is set up in a 4-2-3-1, they have the ability to overload your midfield, your defensive midfield, especially with bodies when they're in possession. And I think that John Michael Hayden thought there just might be a little bit too much space in there towards the end of this half. And you bring on a guy like Bacuzo and you can really clog things up a little bit more. And Gondo yeah, just flicked it off the wrong part of the boot, and it's out for a Louisville throw. And Gondo is listed at 5'8. When he start when he stands next to some of the taller players, you're like, okay, but when he is out there and he's not around anyone, the dude looks commanding. Like yes. He is, he, your eye is drawn to him. He's a, he's a really impressive player. An MLS talent, according to Chris Rich. Here is Damian Barker, John. And Ngando keeps possession beautifully for UNCG. Fred Hall picks it off. Plays it back to Bryce LaBelle. And a restart coming for the cards. 6.50 left in the first half. Tied at one. Makumba Ba opened the scoring tonight in about the 13th or 14th minute. UNCG getting the equalizer in the last five minutes. In both of Louisville's losses to both Duke and Kentucky, they scored first. Kentucky then went on to score three unanswered before Louisville got one back at the end of the match. And against Duke, it was a 1-0 lead for Louisville after 45. And Duke got an early one out of the halftime locker room and then one late to seal the deal. John Michael Hayden talking about Lowell's. I know you mentioned it earlier, Matt. Lowell's in their performances, and they did kind of switch off there. And UNCG was able to just muscle a player off the ball, tuck it in. The defense was caught flat-footed a little bit for that run. And they've had a little bit of trouble here after scoring the goal to really sustain what was such a strong start. Well, there has been a total change in momentum and time of possession. Louisville dominated that in the first third of the first half. Since then, it has been either equal or in favor of UNCG. How much do you attribute that to UNCG just finding its footing in this match and then also Louisville going through a bit of a lull? I think it's both. I mean, this is a good UNCG team, so I think there's always going to be an element of, of a good team enforcing uh, or imposing its will a little bit more, and Louisville still just not quite able to connect the dots getting forward the way they were early on in this game. The press has really caused some problems for Greensboro, but they just haven't been able to get in a position where they can push the clamps a little bit and, and force some turnovers in dangerous areas. Ingun in Gondo. He was looking wide for Ethan Conley, and instead, Madukevich plays it out of bounds.
Bacuzzo into the middle for Jorgalides. Parker John had it poked away. And now in Gondo in a foot race with Anukevich out for a Louisville throw. Good to see Patrick Adekevich back on the pitch. He's only made one appearance through the first eight matches. Dealing with a bit of an injury. Same goes for Ugo Ichara, who we will likely see later on tonight. Matty Walters also available again after he sat out for the first handful of matches due to a hamstring injury. All three of those guys are potentially critical elements and, to a and team. And at one point started yeah, for this Louisville Ida team. Yeah, Kevich is, is an unreal fullback when he is fully healthy and, and at his best. Achara, really good goal scorer and creator. It's a nice bench that Louisville has developed with those guys back. Conley. It was blocked by Ryan Troutman in the right spot at the right time, and it leads to a corner. With three minutes left in the first half, level at one here in Louisville. Conley showing a little bit of an ability to use his body to create space there. Looked like he caught Troutman a little bit off guard with the shot because Troutman could only parry it at the near post. And Gondo out for the corner. And it's a short corner as they bring Birch into the attack. He goes back post, and it's parried away by Troutman. Excellent play by the Kentucky transfer. And Greensboro nicely worked, too. They had Hagen on the back post. But really nicely done to just shift Louisville enough to create that backdoor, back post run. But uh, alert goalkeeping from Troutman, sometimes just getting a fingertip or a hand on it is all you can do. But in that situation, that was vital. Another short corner. This time, Troutman has to punch it aside. Keeping Ryan Troutman busy here on these corners. And that was, oof, that was a really good effort. An alert goalkeeping once again. And Gondo this time goes for goal. And it's headed away. And a foul just on the edge of the six. Sends Bradley Sample to the turf. 90 seconds left in the first half. Troutman will set it down for a goal kick. Well, that was an area last year that John Michael Hayden really was expressed some frustrations about, uh, we'll put it that way, uh, about set piece defending there. And, and Louisville looking a little vulnerable there, but Troutman doing a nice job of staying alert and helping his team out of a, a hairy situation. That second save in particular. Yeah. That ball was bending underneath the crossbar. Yeah. I shouldn't call it Harry. It's pups at the pitch night, a furry situation for. <laughs> you have a way with words, my friend. <laughs> Final 15 seconds. And it is looking like we will end the first half with a 1-1 tie. Louisville on the board first with Makumba Baz goal in the opening 15 minutes. UNCG finds the equalizer with less than 15 minutes to go. And we are knotted up at one apiece. Your impressions of the first half. Yeah, Matt, uh, both teams showing some bite tonight in both directions. Louisville got off to a good start. The press was unsettling Greensboro. They were able to, to force a turnover and score off of that turnover. But Greensboro grew into the game by the scruff pretty quickly. You get the sense that the man in the center circle right now, J.C. Ngando, is on the cusp of doing something special. He's been lurking around the 18. 
And he gets a set for the second half in Louisville. And if you're the Cards, you've got to figure out more ways to get Sonder Road on the ball. He is, he's such a dangerous player. He just hasn't had as much of an opportunity to get forward and do things with it at his feet. And he's your difference maker in this lineup, him and Eric Donqua getting forward. Is it as simple as just feeding him the ball more, or do you think there's more to it to get him open? I, I, Greensboro has done a really good job of, of clustering the midfield and then dominating it. And uh, Louisville's got to figure out ways to work the ball around its flanks and then get it central uh, to its two playmakers. Forward for Basile Mark, defended by Fred Hall. Mark still, and it's out for a corner. If there were to be a key for Louisville in the second half, it would be. Right now, I think it's re-grab re control of the midfield. I, yeah. I know I keep saying that, but I think that's their biggest, their biggest issue right now. And don't concede. Don't concede on set pieces, especially. And Gondo near post, out of play, goal kick coming. This is a UNCG team who returns seven starters from a club that last year led the nation in corner kicks and scoring offense. They capitalize on set piece opportunities. I mean, this is a great opponent for Louisville to, to play in its non-conference. Both of these teams will be happy with the RPI impact that this game has. But, uh, but if you're Louisville, you're at home, you've been playing well, I think you feel like this is a great opportunity to learn how to win some of these games where you score first and then concede and maybe change the calculus of John Michael Hayden's concerns that he's been expressing recently about losing leads and, and playing through some lulls. Again, both losses this year. UNC, rather, Louisville scored first, then conceded multiple times to allow their opponents a victory. By the way, both of those losses coming to top 10 teams in Kentucky and Duke, so not a bad loss on the record as of yet. Here is a run from Al Harchi, and instead it trickles into the midst of Ryan Troutman. Made a couple of really nice plays in goal at the tail end of the first half. making his third consecutive start tonight. <laughs> referee, Callan Radisav. Assistant referees, Caleb Riley and Aaron Rollins. UNCG head coach Chris Rich has coached here many times as an assistant, never as a head coach. Said he and his club very excited for this opportunity to play in a big game environment before they kick off their conference slate. I mean, this is widely considered one of the nicest stadiums in college soccer. Obviously, we've seen the crowd. It's a good crowd usually for these games against a really good team that, that is going to force you to up your game and then you turn into conference play and you've played against a team like this, you're gonna feel like you're operating at a really high level. Especially the way Greensboro has played tonight. They've been very impressive mm. after conceding early. They've grown into this game and look very confident. Crowd sitting on the edge of its seat here as UNCG plays it in and the header from Al Harchi is punched away. And the offside flag did come up. Play on, says Radisav. Good decision there from the referee to just let the game play out as Louisville was already in possession. And good defending there from Troutman coming off his line and recognizing just how tantalizing that was. Mm. It was really all he could do is get a couple fists to it, but it did well. Yeah. 
In both of Louisville's losses, they conceded in the opening 15 minutes of the second half. They are trying to avoid that here tonight and perhaps find one themselves. Here is Quentin Elliott into the middle for Jorgalides. And now wide for Saunder Road. You wanted to see him on the ball more in this half. And the first corner of the night for Louisville. That was good stuff there from Donqua to open up the space out to the right. And Louisville will be happy to get the opportunity to bring big old Josh Jones forward and see if they can serve something up to him. Road with four assists this year. Three of his five last season came on set piece services. Yeah, he is out to take the corner. <laughs> yes, he is. He's got Makumba Ba about 10 feet away from him. Instead, he goes into the box. Riley Sample tried to flip it on. Lots of traffic back to Saunder Road. UNCG picked to repeat as SOCON regular season champions. They won last year, then fell short in the conference tournament, missing out narrowly on an NCAA tournament bid. And that is something that has motivated this team so far throughout the fall. And a result against Louisville tonight would be an, a result against an NCAA caliber team. Lanese out for the throw. Tanqua at midfield. Slips it through to Jorgalides. There is El Harchi. And now Basile Mark. Nobody in the area that he was looking. Tracked down by Quinton Elliott. Something, Matt, that is worth noting here. I mean, this is, uh, we've been talking about it. This UNCG team last year, really, really good season. And two games on that schedule stick out to you. Just, just last year with a number of these guys who were on that, in that starting 11, and that was a dangerous moment. They beat Clemson 3-1 and they drew Virginia nothing, nothing. I mean, those are two results mm. that any guy on this team who participated in that game or even a newcomer who has heard about those results will come into a place like Louisville and say, we can compete with this level of a team. Particularly when you look at the environment that Clemson has been able to build. <laughs> I mean, it is one of the premier atmospheres in college soccer. It's all, I mean, it's flat out awesome. It is. <laughs> it's a bucket list for any college soccer fan going to a match out at Clemson. Make it a whole weekend. Go to a football game, too. El Harchi hounded by Fred Hall. But you're right. This is a UNCG team that returns seven starters plus a handful on the bench from last year. They won a conference championship. They took down a top two team in Clemson. Were we on a? Uh, we were on one of the Louisville games when that was happening, right? I believe. I believe we were we freaking were. out about that. Yes. 
I do vaguely recall. <laughs> it's an eye-catching result even, even to this day. Especially when you think about how Clemson's season ended up last year and how good they are again this season. Here is a run from Abu Kamara. He has scored in back-to-back -back matches, still looking for a touch in the 18 tonight. Yeah, they haven't been able to figure out ways to open up some space for him, but he's a guy who could literally have one touch in a whole game and it would be a goal. So you just always have to be alert if you're Greensboro, wherever Kamara is. Crossed in and dealt with by Emmanuel Hagen. David Bacuzzo getting set to come on for Louisville. Saw him briefly at the end of the first half. Here is Isaiah Vignali. Back for Birch. Now wide for Milanese. Fred Hall has had a tough task tonight, oftentimes marking. JC. Kamara. Run from Jorgalides. Defended by Lashkar. And a whistle gives it back to Louisville. And now some. <laughs> chippiness between Sammy Lashkar and Abu Kamara. Nothing from Callan Radisav. We did have one booking in the first half. Emmanuel Hagen booked for a takedown of Nico Diaz. And now Sonder Rhodes sets up for the restart. Road. Down the Donkwa, back to Road. He will try again. This time, something to test the keeper, and Wild comes up strong. Excellent play by Nicholas Wild. And away we run. And Sonder Road, I mean, that is a dream cross. You want to always try to hit it in a way that forces defenders to turn and face their own goal and have to make a decision and force the goalkeeper to have to come out and make a decision. And the goalkeeper chose right there. Good job by Wild. Three clean sheets already to his name this season. Only six goals against. Here's an opportunity across the mouth of goal. And it just gaves wide. UNCG. A nervy moment as Ethan Conley was sliding back post. Good build up there from Greensboro. It looked like they might try to hit the counter. And instead they were able to work it forward and a really teasing ball across there that had Louisville scrambling because the back post was there and it was just a little too much in front of the runners. But again, Greensboro just looking so threatening getting forward. David Bacuzzo comes on for Sonder Road, who will take a seat on the Louisville bench. Bacuzzo captained the Orlando City Academy team that won a national championship. And they have been very pleased with him in his freshman year here at Louisville as the whistle gives it back to UNCG. Something that Louisville has done really well recruiting wise is bringing in guys who have that kind of experience as freshmen. You talk about Idu Kevich, a guy 
uh, who coming back from injury has so much experience at the academy level and playing the USL level. Talked about Quentin Elliott earlier. There's a bunch of them in this system. Right away had that experience. Andukavich was starting for his USL side yeah, before really he got player. before he got to Louisville. And UNCG will get another corner kick. JC and Gondo. He has served a couple of tasty balls in in the first half. 15 minutes gone in the second half and still level at one. Milanese plays it back in. Jorgalides turns it wide towards midfield. Your thoughts on what you've seen so far here in the second half? Uh, it's been pretty cagey. I, I don't think either team will feel like they've taken control of this game. There's been uh, some good opportunities or half chances for both teams, but, uh, but for the most part, I think Louisville is still trying to figure out how to control the midfield, and I think Greensboro just has to try to take the chances that they're gonna get in front of this frame because they are playing the home team and at some point the crowd will be able to will them a little bit more forward. Jorgalides. Louisville just have not been able to find that rhythm offensively that we saw them have in that Opening 15 minutes of the first half. Now defending again here. Ishmael Alharchi goes wide to Ngondo. Ngondo bearing down. And out of play as it was poked out by Bacuzzo. Rafael Pinzon getting set to check in, as is Matty Walters and Nico Diaz. Ball played in by Basile. Troutman off his line, and he was lucky there. He had Fred Hall to guide the ball away. Greensboro's looked really, really dangerous on set pieces, not just the original delivery, but also on the second ball's in, and Louisville a little shaky in defending them. Just got to tighten up a little bit, and you've got to be the first to the ball when the ball's played into your area. Here's an opportunity. It is Makumba Ba who is away. And Ba has his shot parried away by Nicholas Wild. What a save, laying out to tip it wide. And that's what Louisville <laughs> can do is, even in a game like this, probably feeling like they're not playing at their best. One good play from one of their numerous creators, in this case, Donquo with an electric pass forward into space, and Makumba Ba is off to the races. A great save, but a great play there from Louisville. Wild, the 2021 SoCon Keeper of the Year. Here is a corner for Diaz. Bacuzzo let it rip from about 25, and it's poked away. How about David Bacuzzo coming in off the bench and saying, let's have it? Yeah, I, th I, I don't know that he was quite thinking uh, that that was going to be the situation there. It, it took a second too long to tee him up, and the space was closed down. But I've been impressed with his ability to just occupy some space and, and be a disruptive presence for, for Louisville in the midfield. So Kamara comes off, and Uchara comes on. He's on a minute's restriction after having two surgeries in the offseason for lower extremity injuries. He is somebody that has dealt with injury his entire career. But feeling better now. 
and hoping to provide some magic here in the second half. Here is Achara, and instead it's Diaz flipping it over the top bar. That was really nicely crafted from Louisville. I want to see more of that from the cards. They were able to, to make sure that they were shifting the ball. I know Diaz, it didn't look like that was intentional to get it back out to that left flank. It looked like it took a deflection, but still it shifted Greensboro enough to get the ball out wide and open up the back channel for runs and a really good service in, just Diaz couldn't keep it down. Well, that is a formidable right side right now. Diaz and Uchara, and then opposite them, Makumba Ba. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty good. And, and again, it goes back to the depth to be able to bring in Achara. I know he's limited for right now, but to be able to bring in a dude like that after all the other guys you flipped on the field, it's a, it's a nice little uh, treat for, uh, for John Michael Hayden. John Michael Hayden said that Hugo Achara told him he's been dealing with pain since high school. has had issues with his hips, with his legs, and they are hoping that these two surgeries he had in the offseason will relieve him of that pain that he has just played through throughout his entire collegiate career and some of his high school career. That's a lot to have to deal with, but I hope they're right. He's a really talented player, so you hate to think that anything would have been limiting him. Imagine what he could do unlimited. Nice play by Matty Walters, just onto the pitch. Missed the first four matches with a hamstring injury himself. And a couple of UNCG players will come on. Steven Hernandez, who had that equalizing goal at the end of the first half, as well as Colton Sessoms. Really impressive group of freshmen for Greensboro, too, that they're able to either bring in off the bench or start. It's a nice young group to mix in with some of these returning starters. There is Rafael Pinzon, just in off the bench. First time tonight, he has touched the pitch. John Michael Hayden continues to look for those combinations that can unlock this UNCG team. Vignali. Left off, and there was Steven Hernandez with the left foot. Just couldn't quite get enough of the boot on it, but another really nice ball in from J.C. Ngando. Yeah, good patience there to work the ball into the box. Nice runs, and then a really dangerous teasing ball. Troutman taking the gamble to try to go out and get it, and if you don't when you're a goalkeeper, you really need your back line to help you out, and that time, he was fortunate that it was just a little too strong for Hernandez, but good movement on both ends of the area there for Greensboro. Hernandez inches away from his second goal of the game. Scored to equalize at the end of the first half. Already has a hat trick this season against Coastal Carolina. Now the line's moving up a bit for UNCG. They have been much more aggressive 
defensively in this second half. Trying to create some transitional moments. Bacuzzo taken down on the edge of the 18. And a whistle comes in immediately from Callan Radisau. And Ethan Conley arguing that he got the ball there, but just got a little bit too much of Bacuzzo. But good job there from Louisville to stay patient in possession. And yeah, that's uh, just finishing in on the challenge a little bit there, but a great chance for Louisville. This is a really awkward position for Wilde, the goalkeeper, because Diaz has a wicked right foot that can bend this in, but he's also got some big targets. Diaz on the restart. Luchara right in front of goal. Diaz chips it in. Played down by LaBelle. Then out it goes for a Louisville corner. Trying to loft it up there for Josh Jones. Jones just got caught under his guy there, but he did have the physical advantage. So we'll see if they can try to find him again here on the corner. Diaz again. He has the char right on the goal line, as well as LaBelle and Bradley Sample on the edge of the six. Now a potential counter opportunity for UNCG. Stunted momentarily by Makumba Ba. And Ba with the back heel flip to win it back for Louisville. He's made some important defensive disruptions tonight for Louisville, enough to help them recover here defensively. Tracking back earlier in the game, the MVP so far for the Cardinals. Open the scoring. In the first 15 minutes of the match for Louisville, his third goal of the season gave them a one-goal lead. A little over 15 minutes left. And again, if you didn't know it now, now you do. No overtime in college soccer this year. So there are just 17 minutes left for one of these teams to come away with a victory. Matty Walters, the Bowling Green transfer. Handball whistled against Nico Diaz. Interested to see if any more changes come from John Michael Hayden. He's tinkered quite a bit with his lineup tonight to just try to find some mojo, just try to find some answers, especially in the midfield. And you'd have to assume that Sonder Road and, and Damian Barker, John, and Georgia Lides are all gonna be possible re-entries, especially Road. See if they can mix things up a little bit more. Haven't seen Damian Barker, John, yet in this half. Always somebody that's able to create with his speed. McManus, too. McManus has not appeared here in the second half, and he's another guy who can make a difference for them. Had that late goal against Seattle, did McManus. Looks like he's about to come on. I didn't even see him down there, Matt. Now I feel smart. <laughs> <laughs> you are, Jeff. <laughs> Thank you. You are. And here comes Radisav. The card will be issued to Matty Walters. He sent Steven Hernandez into the bench area for UNCG. Pretty, pretty straightforward call there for the referee. Wasn't playing on the ball. A hard hit there from Walters. That was... Uh, I want you to feel me yeah. type of foul. And and look, I mean, if you're Louisville, you're on your home field, I, I think they feel like maybe Greensboro has been the aggressor for a lot of this game. You gotta impose yourself a little bit. Maybe that's Walters trying to send a message to his teammates here to bulk up a little bit. Eric Danko will join Brandon McManus 
at some point here to substitute in in the final 15 minutes. No sign of Abu Kamara or Saunder Road. And Gondo. Open zone, turns it wide for Diaz. Looking for a run. Ugo Achara. Wisely plays it out of bounds, and it's a Louisville throw. And now here do come. Brandon McManus and Eric Dankwa. They are on for Makumba Ba and Rafael Pinzone. McManus coming for the wide forward there. Gives them almost a two-striker feel with Nico Diaz out on the right. But a lot of attacking on the field now for Louisville for the final 15 minutes, and I'm sure they'll add a little bit more. Milanese took a bit of a tumble there, is grabbing that right shoulder. He is the vocal leader of this team and the backbone of the back line. Somebody with lots of high-level experience transferred over from Akron, played in the national championship game back in 2018, and he will stay in the match. Achara, defended by Milanese. And now Walters, looking for McManus, plays it down, and Tenkwa sends it into the seats. Still good play, though. A nice decision there from McManus to drop it off. Danqua's had a couple of times where he's had the ball played to him on the edge of the area, but again, high degree of difficulty to hit it on the half volley like that, keep it on target, have enough power to beat a good goalkeeper like Nicholas Wilde. Milanese under pressure, gives it back to Wild. And here Louisville's coaching staff urging their guys to press higher and higher and with more energy. It's tough to dig deep like that, but that's why you build a deep squad. Does a draw hurt this Louisville team? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't think so. <laughs> Achara showing why he's such a dangerous player, muscling off defenders and ripping that shot away. I, I don't think it hurts Louisville from a standpoint of RPI or right. record because Greensboro is going to end up being high up there. I do think Louisville will be disappointed with its performance through 78 minutes. I, that could change with a win, but even then I still think John Michael Hayden will say, look, this is a, a, a good opponent, but the performance was not what, what I would want out of my team. Mm. UNCG picked to win the SOCON regular season. Made an NCAA tournament run in the spring campaign of 2021. First time in over a decade that the program reached the NCAA postseason. And they return seven starters from a season ago. Now in Gondo, leaves it wide. Sessoms off the chest of Troutman. Troutman's had to come up big for Louisville on a couple occasions there. Good combination play. And of course, once again, it's Ngando who's involved. Really good ball in and not a ton of options for Sesums there, but still a good reaction save from the goalkeeper, Troutman, who is now needing a little bit of a breather after that shot. That's enough to take the wind out of you a little bit on a chilly night in Louisville. Another corner kick for J.C. Ngando. Nobody playing for the short corner. This ball is coming in. Dealt with by Bradley Sample. Well done by the Louisville captain. Now ahead for Nico Diaz. He goes down. And nothing from Callan Radisau. Much to the chagrin of these Louisville fans. Yeah, I think the argument there is Diaz. I think he had a good argument. But from the referee's vantage point, he might have gone down a little too easily there especially with the ball knocked out of an area where he could be a threat. That was a good effort nonetheless. 
<laughs> it was. He had the, had the home fans wanting something, so there you go. Sometimes that's enough to sway. You get enough folks calling for a call. Well, you'd really have an argument if the, the uh, dogs here at Pups at the Pitch started barking. I think that would be the ultimate sign. That would have been enough <laughs> to turn Callan Radice I'd out. I'd change my mind if that Assuming happened. he's a dog and not a cat guy. Yeah, well, if he's a cat guy, I guess that would make sense if he's a referee that he's a cat guy. Wow. <laughs> Throwing I'm shade. I'm kidding. With 80 minutes gone. <laughs> Here is Milanese <laughs> getting set to throw it in. Final 10 minutes. UNCG, as Jeff alluded to just a few moments ago, have really controlled this match. After Louisville tallied the first goal of the night, all the way back in the 14th minute. Beautiful ball in. And it was Ethan Conley on the end of it. He just couldn't quite keep it in bounds. And a goal kick for Troutman. Louisville sending numbers forward towards midfield. Their lines are very high. You see where their head is at in the final nine minutes. Achara making a run and played away by Lashkar. Andukevich getting set to come on now for the cards. He does have goal scoring capabilities, but maybe more than that, Jeff, the ability to create, which Louisville has lacked in these last 40 minutes. Yeah, it can get you some width. He's got some good pace. He plays a really good ball, a, a whipped in ball. He loves to strike it well into the area. And Louisville just has not been able to get in behind very often tonight. And as a result, they maybe are trying to find some guys who can play balls into that space instead of trying to pass and run their way through it through the middle. Abubakar Kamara now standing right next to John Michael Hayden. He wants to get on. He has scored in back-to-back -back matches. Long throw. Sample taken down. And a whistle goes against Hugo Achara. That gives it back to UNCG. Interesting. Achara has been... <laughs> hanging out an awful lot around Nicholas Wild, all up in his personal space. <laughs> Radisav says not anymore, and a goal kick for Wild. Well, it is funny that Chris Rich, the scouting report of his goalkeeper, is quote he doesn't get frazzled. Well, <laughs> Louisville is trying to do its best tonight, and he's done a pretty good job on set pieces and any interactions to not really be bothered by him. And to his credit, so is Troutman on the other end for Louisville. He's had to kind of fight through it a few times, but he's still done just enough to get a fist on it, a, a fingertip on it to, to keep Louisville in this position that they're in right now. Final seven minutes here in Louisville. Can somebody break through and come away with a victory here on a Tuesday top 25 matchup? Hernandez had it poked away. One back by Josh Jones. And now back to Troutman. Wild punts it across midfield. Well, now a flurry of substitutions will come on for Louisville. Abu Kamara, 
Patrick Idukevich. As well as Konstantinos Jorgalides. One last offensive push for the cards here. Final six minutes to play in Louisville. Just trying to get attacking options and just be a, a little bit of a different offering for Louisville as they continue to try to break down this Greensboro squad. They just haven't been able to. Milanese whistled for the push. Abu wanted to keep it going. He was asking for an advantage. Instead, a restart coming here. Adukevic and Jorgalides lining up near the ball. Josh Jones on the edge of the 18. This is David Bacuzzo. It'll be Jorgalides to serve it in. Towards goal. Beautiful ball in and flipped away by McManus. And a big takedown there from David Bacuzzo. That'll warrant a card. It is a yellow. That was a critical, critical last second header. I'm not sure if it was Basile Mark or Lashkar, <laughs> but on that on the McManus effort there, I believe it just got one final deflection from Greensboro because McManus had a good look at it. There was a really good ball in. And then, of course, the foul to disrupt the counterattack. That looked like a tackle on the football field. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Sample ahead for Kamara. Referee's had some work to do tonight, Matt. Yes, he has. Here is Sample again across midfield. Adukevic really all over the pitch now. Perhaps flipping with Matty Walters to serve something in to McManus from the left side. Kamara engaging. And Wild is there to smother it. Greensboro's done a great job on Kamara tonight. He's had to come drop a little bit deeper to even get a, a foot on the ball. He's drawn a few fouls, but for the most part, they've been able to shield him away from anything. As Appears the referees here are having a conversation while a player on the far side for Greensboro has gone down. Looks like it's Emmanuel Hagen, perhaps dealing with some cramping. Kalen Radisav coming over to chat with the fourth official, Chris Scherfranz. Clock has been stopped at four minutes. I haven't seen a goal since the end of the first half. It was the equalizer by UNCG. They are looking for a result tonight after a disappointing loss to Campbell. Meanwhile, Louisville has won back-to-back -back against Florida Gulf Coast and then a top-10 team in Pitt. Their second top-10 win of the season. Can they find it deep within? Under four to play. Vignali, well done to keep possession. And now Ngando has space. Ngando serves it wide, back across the middle, and Troutman falls on it. Yeah, you could see what the effort was there from Greensboro trying to get it out wide and curl that in. He had two runners ahead of him for Birch, and he just wasn't able to put the right bend on it. And then stolen away by Ngando. And a foot race with Adukevic. Guides it back to Troutman. Birch still lamenting over that missed opportunity on the far sideline. Hoping he has one more crack at it in the final waning moments of the match. It has been almost library-esque in the grandstands in this second half. The Cards fans just wanting something to cheer about, but also nervously watching as their 15th ranked Cards are searching for that game-breaking goal. 
Greensboro's just defended really well. They've put a lot of traffic in the midfield and just made things difficult for Louisville. I think their size has been a factor too, Greensboro. Some bigger players in this roster. And Louisville has been afraid at times seemingly to commit bodies forward as a foul there. Because of how dangerous Greensboro is on the counterattack, they just have not been able to throw their fullbacks forward and get involved because they have to be so alert in that space in behind. I have to be careful here if you're Louisville on the restart. Milanese looking ahead at Ngando and El Harchi as well. And a foul gives it back to the cards. 90 seconds left here. Kamara flips it back to Sample. Well, back into the middle for McManus. Danqua turns it wide for Walters. 70 seconds. Walters into the middle. McManus. And it's out for a corner. 60 seconds left. There you go. This is a big opportunity for Louisville as Idukevich trotting over to offer up his services. Really good deliverer of the ball. Final minute here, this is it. Not a ton of urgency. You'd think this is probably the last opportunity for Louisville. 40 seconds and ticking. Fans on their feet. And another corner. Can Louisville get it quickly here? 30 seconds, tick, 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 tick here for the Cardinals. It's gotta be a little bit higher here from Idukevich. This time he goes back post, and it's headed away by Hagen. That looked painful. And that a player really goes painful. down on the ricochet Oof. from Eric Dankwa. I gotta tell you, Matt, I spent a lot of time in my younger days playing in weather like this, and as the game progresses, you get colder and colder. It's not. It's not cold out, it's about 60 something degrees out right now, but it just, it's kind of breezy, it's starting to feel like fall. When you get hit in the leg by a ball, it hurts. When you get hit like that on a bang bang play, I mean, that is a very dangerous moment. Donquo we know can hit the ball hard. That time it was a well struck volley. I believe That's it was really Jack scary. Birch yeah. who went down. He's being mm. tended to by the training staff. I hope he's okay. It's a really scary moment. Bradley Sample and Abu Kamara still pleading their case because they felt like there was an opportunity there in the run of play to get the ball back and put something on net. Now you feel probably like that has been negated by this stoppage. And that was actually Marco Afonso who took the shot. Looks like maybe it hit him in the chest the way he's walking off. But I don't know if Louisville has an argument because it deflected out near midfield. I, I Right. I just, I don't think that that's much of an argument. But look, the bottom line is Greensboro did a really good job, even with a high line of, for the most part, limiting Louisville from getting in behind. Makumba Ba had that one opportunity from the edge of the area. But they have made things really difficult for Louisville across the board, and, and they're going to come out of here with a hard-fought point. All the players here wondering exactly what's happening with Kalen Radisav and where he is going to lay the ball, who's going to have possession. Abu Kamara, you can see him, arms spread wide, and he has just been booked. Ever since the play was stopped, Abu Kamara has been pleading the case of the Cardinals, suggesting that it should be their ball on the restart. It does not appear that way. And instead, Hagen will punt it across midfield. LaBelle will quickly now try to put it forward. McManus, nothing. Bacuzzo poked away. Kamara, now Jorgalides, and it sails out of play. Right, Kamara is furious because this is a guy who's built an entire college career on the ball running across his body and then turning onto his right foot and hitting it. And just as